Hello and welcome to this AWS Media Entertainment video tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes or so demonstrating how to add HTML5 based motion graphics to your live stream, as well as a few pointers to assist if you're interested in creating graphic web pages yourself. I'm Krista Whitehorn and I'm a solutions architect at AWS specializing in our suite of media services. Both AWS Elemental Live, which is our on-premise streaming appliance, and AWS Elemental Media Live, our fully managed live transcoding service, support overlaying motion graphics from HTML5 web pages. Creating graphics this way is becoming very popular because it allows you to easily add visual elements to your live streaming service, such as logos, scoreboards, and text crawls, without the need for proprietary graphic solutions. As you can see here, I'm going to deploy a typical live streaming architecture to demonstrate this. I'm feeding a source to Media Live, which creates my adaptive bitrate stack, which is then pushed to Media Package as my content origin. Viewers of my stream then connect and are serve content through Amazon CloudFront. I'm going to use Media Live's workflow wizard as it does most of the work for me to create and attach these services together. I'm then going to update my configuration to enable motion graphics and show you how to control the overlay and the graphics location using Media Live's schedule actions. We have worked with a number of established third parties who can provide comprehensive solutions for creating and controlling graphics pages such as Liger Systems and Singular Live. I have also heard from a number of customers who are interested in creating their own graphics and would like to know how to get started and what, if any, limitations or considerations they should bear in mind. Today, I'm going to show you an example of a very basic web page I created to add a logo overlay to my live stream. Having logged into the AWS console, I'm going to locate Media Live. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use the workflow wizard to help me set up my live channel. Let's give the workflow a name. I'm going to use a single pipeline, so I'm not concerned with the redundancy for this test. Select a role, I'll remember that for future. I'm going to use an MP4 input. I have one already, let's just select that. And I'm going to select Media Package as that's my origin. And I'm just happy with the default renditions there. Let's create my workflow. The wizard is deploying a media package channel with several endpoints for HLS, CMAP, and Dash. It's attaching a CloudFront distribution and creating my media live channel. Whilst that's being created, let's take a look at the graphics page itself. I'll show you the HTML later, but as you can see, the intention here is to just simply add a logo on the right-hand side of the page. Let's just inspect the page. You can see it's canvassed at 1280 by 720. And I've allowed controls for this actually within the URL. So I'll change to 640. And there you can see it's changed the graphics page size. Let's see how our deployment's progressing. OK, that's complete. Before I start my channel, though, I want to go and enable motion graphics. So let's just click into my Media Live channel. And then under General Settings, Motion Graphics, let's just set that to Enabled. Everything's fine there. And just to update my channel. OK, 
Okay, so we can either start Media Live within the channel itself. I'm going to go back to my workflow. Wait for the status to come back. And let's start my workflow. So this is now starting my Media Live channel. Take a few minutes to get going. And that's running. Okay, so let's have a look at my media package endpoint. I can just see a preview of my output here. I actually want to take the URL Go to my endpoint, not my media package. I want the CloudFront URL. Let's capture that. And I'm just going to use Safari and just play my stream natively in Safari. Okay, great. Let's just let it adapt to its bit rates. Right, so the next step is to start my overlay. So I'll go back to the Media Live channel, into the scheduler, and I need to create a schedule action. Just grab the URL I'm after. Just give it a unique name. I can start at a fixed time. I'm just going to do it immediately and enable motion graphics, define the URL. I'll leave the duration blank, which means the overlay will just be active until I say otherwise. Now let's have a look at our player. Now I selected the 640 by 360 rendition. So we should see a small version of my graphics page appear. And there it is. You might just be able to see that there it isn't hugely visible, um, but it's in the middle of my page. So I know that isn't ideal, so let's go and update my scheduler. Just going to update my URL with the bigger resolution. And there, that looks a lot better. So now I've located my graphic in the correct place that I want it on my video screen. One final thing, let's have a look at what happens if your graphics page is larger than the resolution of your input source. Let's change this to be 1080, 1920 by 1080. Now you can see we've got these ugly scroll bars vertically and horizontally because the graphics overlay is now acting like a browser um, and is, is attempting to browse for that largest, larger canvas size. So it's important to make sure that your graphics resolution matches your input source. Let's have a look at the graphics pages itself. This is just a simple HTML page. I've just got some styling within the, within the file. I've just got a simple image tag. And then all the script at the bottom is just to handle all the um, resolutions. I can define opacity within my graphics page and then positioning. So it's pretty straightforward HTML5 uh, coding. As you can see, the process of adding graphics is really easy. You create the channel in Media Live or Elemental Live. If you have one already, of course, you can just reuse that. Enable the Motion Graphics feature. The service will allocate the resources it requires to perform the overlay. For Media Live, 
This will be reflected in your channel cost across the runtime of your event, not just the time you are overlaying graphics on screen. For Elemental Live, you need the Motion Graphics license installed on your appliance. I then showed you how to use MediaLive's scheduler API to turn on and change the image overlay. There is similar capability via Elemental Live's API, although the hardware appliance has the added capability of being able to drive the graphics overlay via specific SCSI markers on the input stream. Once the overlay is active, you can simply update the graphics page. If, for example, you're streaming a sporting event and overlaying a scoreboard and one of the team's scores, you update the graphics web page and this is reflected in your live stream. You don't need to create a new schedule action in Media Live to update your graphic. You only need to do this if you're changing the page URL or want to disable the overlay completely. One of the main things to consider, particularly if you're creating your own graphics, is, as you saw, the resolution of the web page in relation to your input source. I recommend they match. That way, you know exactly where the graphic elements will appear on screen. If you would like additional information to help you test motion graphics, I've included links to the user guides here, as well as a blog post on this topic, covering both Elemental Live and Media Live. Well, I hope this session has been useful and I've inspired your creativity to customize and enhance your live streams by adding graphics elements. See you next time in another episode of AWS Media and Entertainment Video Tutorials. Mm -hmm.